on set, you have to walk around with a thesaurus with Michael. You're like, wait, Michael, you said what? Well, I saw, I saw that that book says booty on the top, so I don't know if you want to pull that Oh, out this is a That's play. Not... This is a play. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm X Mile. This is Ty White. This is Michael Benjamin Washington, and we are from American Auto. And this is when Zay Zay met. And today, Zay Zay met us. How's it going down, mi gente? I am Zay Zay, and welcome to When Zay Zay Met. Now, today we are meeting three wonderfully entertaining actors who not only keep me in stitches, but are oddly making me root for them in every single episode. How do you do that? From NBC's hit comedy series, American Auto, this is X Mayo, Ty White, and Michael Benjamin Washington. Hello. Hey, Hello, Zay Zay. It's good to see everybody today. Yeah, good to see you too. Oh my goodness, the gorgeousness. I don't know if the, the interwebs can handle this, but the gorgeousness <laughs> is real. <laughs> kind. Okay, um, let's talk about the series a little bit. I was thinking about this earlier. One of the defining traits of classic legendary sitcoms is really the ensemble. What does it take to make a legendary ensemble? That's a really good question. And I've grown up, as many of us have, watching NBC sitcoms, you know, from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Cosby Show, Different World, Cheers, Family Ties, like it just goes on and on and on. So I've yep. studied them my whole life. And I think it's like in our skin, it's in our DNA, just culturally. But like you said, all of them have to do with how is the story being told by this collective group of series regulars, you know, right. and every week do you want to come back to them? And what's been exciting about the second season of American Auto, particularly for the three of our characters, the three black faces, is to go a little bit deeper into the characterizations, to go into deeper into the flaws, to go into the deeper into the mayhem and the ways that they aren't perfect, the way that they don't help get out of the situation, but complicate it. <laughs> right. And that's what makes a great ensemble. Where's the drama? Where's the conflict? and how do you humorously do it? And the three of us got a, a lot of opportunities this season to do that. I'll just say, I mean, it starts from, uh, I think from the top down, uh, you do have to have a good leader. And I think our leader is Justin Spitzer and he's been down this road before with uh, with Superstore. And then you have to have good writing. Uh, then you have to have good actors and good chemistry. Um, and in our case, we all get along. It doesn't always work out that way in some shows. Sometimes people really don't like each other, but that plays as well too, because there's such a powerful dynamic of not getting along that the chemistry is there. Whereas in our case, we actually enjoy being around one another. Um, I think we also understand how each other's, how each other works um, and give each other our, each other space to work um, in their most efficient manner. Um, so I think just you just need chemistry. Whatever that chemistry is, you can have strong hate, a strong love, but you got to have something because indifference does not play. If you do not care, if you're just, I don't care, then it's going to show up on screen. So um, I think we all are in some way passionate about this job, uh, and aspects of this job, and passionate about one another, which is uh, beautiful to play. In. And and um, hopefully it continues to grow and um, evolve um, in future seasons. Right. And it's definitely beautiful to watch. Uh, one of the other things that's also wonderful about this is the workplace comedy aspect of it. Right. So not only is it an ensemble, but it's also that workplace uh, comedy and being able to do that. Obviously, you guys get to tackle different, very topical kind of plot lines as well. I mean, you guys have hit, oh, my gosh, uh, executive pay. Um, struggling racism. In towns, racism, representation in media. Um, is there any topic that you guys think might be off limits to your particular show or you guys really just, let's get it, let's hit anything? I feel like there's not a thing that comedy can't tackle, but it has to be, when you do the rule is in, when you do comedy that's blue, it has to be funnier than it is true. It has to be funnier than it is mean. So if you're going to make a rape joke, it better be the best rape joke you ever made in your goddamn life. You know, like, and if you're going to make a race joke, so it's just like, if we're going to do it, I think as long as we do it right, so I don't think there's a topic that we can't handle, but as long as it's done with respect, as long as it's done in a nuanced, complex fashion, and we're not just like taking a very like uh, rough or very layered topic and just kind of like throwing a joke at the wind and then we're out. Um, I have no problem with doing that. All right. You know, one of the things that I find interesting as, watch, as I'm watching American uh, Auto is 
I see not only myself in the show, but I see a lot of the people that I grew up with in this show. So truthfully, it seems like representation is not an issue on this show. Uh, representation in media, I should say, is not an issue on this show. Um, does it seem as though that's becoming pervasive in Hollywood in general? Like, little by little, we making those end roads or is it still an uphill battle? I think it'll probably always be an uphill battle. And, you know, that's just like saying, has racism ended? I don't know if it ever will, but has the reaction to it, the response to it, and the resources made available to those who are the victims of it become more plentiful. What's so interesting is we got this pilot two weeks before lockdown. So, you know, I got this this week, three years ago, and then the world shut down, you know, March 15th. Wow. And then somehow, inside of waiting for the pilot to shoot, the, the murder of George Floyd and the awakening of Black Lives Matter, which then, of course, affected Hollywood, which then, of course, opened a lot of people's eyes up. So we've had this season, you know, two, three Black male directors, uh, one for Cyrus's Passion Project, Phil Lewis, who I, we all grew up watching on Different World, uh, playing Kadeem Hardison's head of pledges, and he's giving me these great notes on Cyrus's episode, and I'm like, would that have happened had the world not shifted while we were waiting? Would that have happened? And I think Justin has been, his eyes have been open longer than others about how to do it because he did cast three of us in a corporate environment where a lot of networks wouldn't have cast Ty and I together. You're both six foot, you're both the same skin color, you're both kind of smart and kind of attractive. Well, the audience will get confused. It's like, no, they won't. <laughs> Oh, no, no, it they doesn't work. No, one of them wears glasses. No, one, one of them wears glasses. Of them. <laughs> and then he's oh. got dimples. And then X, oh, I'm like, okay, I guess she could be an assistant. Like, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I always say I'm very grateful because diversity is always when it comes to um, uh, people's uh, racial identity, which I think is important, and sexual identity. But I've never really seen diverse in body size. So I'm always not saying that. Um, I think it's like unspoken that we kind of have to wear uh, the weight of our community on our back. But when big black women see me out, or they tag me on Instagram or they're posting about it. Like one girl has started a page about Dory Spitz and she's a big black woman. And she's like, this is where she gets her clothes from. Like, I just feel so grateful that women that look like me feel seen. Cause that's how I felt when I saw Jack A, when I saw Queen Latifah, like I was like, that's me right there. So I, I'm just so grateful that diversity and size is shown on American Auto. Mm. Mm, yes, mm -hmm. me too. And you know what? What's interesting is I remember reading um, that your mom told you that if you're not part of the solution, then you're part of the problem. Or if you're not presenting 100%. solutions and you're only complaining, then you might be part of the problem. But girl, you're doing it. you do doing oh, it. Thank you. By it. his grace. And with these two here by my side, For sure. it is very important. I have to big up MB Dub and Ty because it, although I love my white co-stars and that is all fine and dandy, it is nothing like having community, like having village, like having home to be there with and to know that there's not a joke that I can't pitch. There's not a reference that I can't say that will not be welcomed with open arms, that will not be supported. And what I don't have to do like a five-step PowerPoint on what Shabuya Roll Call means. You know, like it, it, that feels so good. When I'm in the scenes with them, I know that I can just kind of like take a little more armor off and I can just be me on the steps of like my auntie stoop, like period. Mm. Amen. Amen. Okay, um, 15 seconds. Sell me American Auto. Why do we need to watch this this show? That's Michael Bay. <laughs> American Auto is a story about the C-suite and the people who make the decision that affect most of our friends and families and parents' lives. Those are the hard workers of every day and who gets to sign their checks and what are the foibles that they go through every single week. And to have three of the seven faces be people of color, which is more representative of Detroit, of America in 2023, is a wonderful, wonderful invitation for people that look like us and white folks to join and to see this. This is very, very important important to see an exe a black executive and a black executive assistant and somebody who is fast tracking to the executive ranks and what are they going through every week even if it's 20 minutes of laughter it's very important that you see it the way that we saw 
all the kids on Fresh Prince and all those other shows and on NBC. It's just our turn now to pass that torch. Mm, two new words for me today. Dandy and foibles. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm home. serious. On set, you have to walk around with a thesaurus with Michael. You're like, wait, Michael, you said what? Okay. <laughs> well, I don't I saw, know how to I respond that. That book that. says booty on the top, so I don't know if you want to pull that Oh, this is, that a this is a play. This is a play. Like, oh, yes, guys, I'm reading the script for Booty Call. It's um very high brow. <laughs> Very hard. This is an amazing play, though. Get into it. It's the, okay. Yeah, Booty candy. I love it. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your entertainment. And I certainly appreciate you guys' presence. Um, much love. Much love. Thank you and continued success. Thank you, Zay Zay. Thank you all so much for watching when Zay Zay met. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell to be notified when we upload more conversations with celebrities and other interesting people. Now, if you'd like to see your favorite celebrity on the show, it's simple. Just tell us who that is by leaving us a comment down below. We hope you enjoyed today's episode, and we'll see you on the next one. Hasta la próxima. No quiero del corazón.